The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents... This is your FBI. This is your FBI. The official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. The Equitable Life Assurance Society has 8,000 trained representatives from coast to coast serving over 4 million members. Tonight, one of our Equitable Society representatives has a brief but important message on Social Security. As you may know, the Social Security law has been changed. Benefits have gone up from 50 to 100 percent. So things are different now. Your security outlook has been changed, and you really owe it to yourself and your family to stop a minute and get a clear idea of just what lies ahead. With this in mind, the Equitable Society has revised its famous fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. Let me suggest that you listen carefully in just 14 minutes when Mr. Keating will tell you just what this chart can do for you. Tonight, file number 297. Its subject, Manhunt. Its title, The Jungle Killer. The reason for bringing you tonight's case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation is to show that the life of a special agent is not a blue suit, white collar position. For FBI special agents must be more than shrewd observers and good shots. They must also, at times, be as adept at costume and character portrayal as an actor. In one case, for example, a special agent had to pose as an immigrant fruit stand operator. In another... It was necessary for an agent to pass himself off as a cattle-stealing cowhand. Others have worked as boilermakers, morticians, auto racers, and one even became a hypnotist. In tonight's case, you will witness Special Agent Taylor posing as an itinerant hobo, living, eating, and sleeping with other hobos as he stalks a killer. Tonight's file opens on the edge of an open field located on the outskirts of an eastern city. Throughout the field are small groups of ragged, unshaved men huddled over scattered fires. This is a hobo jungle. It is early afternoon as a freight train lumbers by. The train is almost gone when one of the men darts toward the tracks, runs alongside an open gondola car, scrambles onto the ladder, climbs up, and looks into the car. Hello, Bo. Hi. Coming in? Yep. Welcome to my private car. Thanks. Say, son, you got a smoke? No. Got anything on you to drink? No, I I just threw away the bottle. Oh, there. Well, sure looks like it'll be a healthy trip. I got half a ham sandwich. No, 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 thanks. My name's Jim. What's yours? Just call me Pop. Okay, Pop. Let me go and grab some shut-eye. Like to leave a call? Yeah. Wake you for dinner. Hey, you bum. What? Railroad cop. Hit the road, you guys. Ah, uh, come on in and make us. Hey, there ain't no point in doing that, Jim. Ah, they call us bums. All right. Get moving. Okay, okay. There's something to remember us by. Oh! Oh, now, hey, hey, son, you knocked out a cop. That's right. Oh, come on, Pop. Let's get off and get back to the jungle. hours later, agent in charge Meade is at his desk in the local FBI field office when his phone rings. Meade speaking. Jim Taylor, Mr. Meade. Yeah, where are you? You know the hobo jungle that's near the freight yard? Yes. Well, I'm in a store about two blocks away. You're still in town? Yes, I, I caught that freight. I saw Pop Russell and we came back together. Well, why? Well, I couldn't get friendly with Pop while we were here, so I had Tommy Johnson and the railroad police fake a fight with me. Where? On the train. Oh, and, uh, Mr. Meade, if you talk to Tommy, tell him I hope I wasn't too rough, will you? I will. Now, uh, what's the setup now? 
Well, the fight works for the old man's my pal, but I still haven't gotten around to talking to him about Hatch Harper. We received some additional information on Harper from Washington this afternoon. Oh? He's wanted out west for killing a sheriff. Well, that's two murders he's committed. At least, so don't get careless. I won't, sir. When do you think you'll be calling again? Well, I don't know. Would you like a walkie-talkie? There's not much place around the jungle to hide it. I see. Do you want another man to work with? Yes, if you can spare one. All right, I'll put uh, George Perry on. Oh, that'll be fine. There's a coal yard that's a couple hundred yards down from our shack. If you could get George a job there, I, I can give him all my messages. We'll start arranging that right now. Jimmy boy? No, I got enough, Pop. Oh, brother, brother, would you listen what they're doing to poor old Mother McCree? Yeah, it's pretty awful. Well, uh, this should be their last number. They only get three songs to a pint, you know. Well, uh, <clears throat> guess I'll stretch me out. This is the life, hmm, Jimmy boy? Balmy breeze, warming sun... And a nice pot of mulligan stew. <laughs> what more could a man want, huh? Pop, you left out the best part. What's that? No cops. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You uh, hot, Jim? Uh-huh. What's the rap? I knifed the guy. Bad? Well, I cooled him. Ah. Then you're laminate. No, that job was far enough behind me. I'm on my way to Lake City. Is that home base? Oh, no, there's a safe there with over 50,000 in it. Oh, brother. I love those round numbers. A guy I was in the can with had the job all set up when he got collared. He's in for 20, so I bought it from him. There you go. Business, business. You just can't get away from it any place. Pop, do you know anybody in Lake City? Why? Well, I'm going to need some help. What kind? A good Pete man and a real strong muscle. You got any recommendations? Well, I don't know that I care to answer that. No, and why not? I don't know you that good, Jim. What's the matter? You think I'm throwing you a plant? Oh, no, 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 boy. Well, then why hang a fish on nah, me? Nah, 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 don't get huffy, son. Look, you go into the shack and I'll rustle up a bottle. We'll have a few drinks together, get to know each other a little bit better, and maybe I can help you out. <laughs> for me, Mr. Mead? Uh, yes, Perry, come in. I'm putting on a case with Jim Taylor. Oh, that stolen car ring? No, I took him off everything else so he could concentrate on locating a fugitive named Al Harper. Harper? Yes, his nickname's Hatch. Oh, yeah. I'm just starting to read the I.O. on him. Well, he's committed two murders that we know about, but we have no idea where he might be. The only pattern we can establish is that he lives in hobo jungles. Any particular ones? No, not that we know of. Taylor out in this thing already? Yes. Where? He's at the jungle up on the north side. Mm -hmm. Want me to join him? No, he won't have to. He's made contact with an old hobo friend of Harper's named Pop Russell. We're hoping Russell can lead us to Harper's hideout. Oh. Now, your job is to go to work at that coal yard near the jungle. Taylor will come by when he's got some word. <laughs> Have a little drink, Jimmy boy? No, Pop. What's the matter, son? What's wrong? Ain't you a drinking man? No, no, not much. Oh, dear, woe is me. <clears throat> I guess I'll just have to finish it myself then. <coughs> oh, my, my. You know, seeing a bottle go empty is like watching a good friend die. Now, Jimmy boy, suppose you and me get back to your proposition. You said you need a good peat man and some muscle. Isn't that right? That's right, Pop. Well, <clears throat> looks like maybe I ought to come out of retirement. No. From what? Son, you mean to, you mean you don't know my talent? I'm a peat man. I've been cracking cribs for 40 years. I can boil down dynamite like it was a mulligan stew. How long since you worked, Pop? Oh, I don't know, about five years. It's a long time. Well, you saw me lift that bottle, didn't you, son? Soup don't weigh any more. Okay, suppose I do take you on. What about the muscle? I'll get it. I'll need the best. 
I've got the best. Who is it? Oh, a friend of mine. Can you trust him? Huh? <clears throat> Known him for 15 years. We did a little time together in Masonville. Where's he now? Oh, he's around. Well, can we go and see him? Well, I think he'd rather come here. Yeah, all right, Pop. When can you get a hold of him? Well, I think I could bring him around for dinner tonight. George! Yo, George! Oh, hi, Jim. Boy, I thought you'd never be alone. Get anything? Yeah, I think so. Mr. Meade tell you about Pop Russell? No. Well, I've been working on him. I told him I had a job lined up and I needed some muscle. He volunteered to give me the best. Meaning Harper? Well, he didn't mention him by name, but he said they'd done time together 15 years ago at Masonville. Huh? According to his record, Harper was at Masonville then. When's he bringing him around? Tonight. When? Dinner time. That'll be, oh, say about 6 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Mr. Meade doesn't want you to make any arrests, so I've already talked to the police. They're interested in Harper, too. Huh? Whenever you're ready, they'll cooperate. We can raid the jungle. Okay, George. You living in a shack? Yeah. Where's it located? It's down near the deep brush at the far end. It's a lean-to. There's a tree stump in front of the door. Well, if Harper's coming to see you, we better give him a little time to get there. All right. We'll make the raid at 7.30 tonight. Captain? Just about. Where are your men? There's a detail on the south side. They're all ready. I'm waiting for a signal from Lieutenant Williams. He's moving in from the west. Do we uh, go in when that comes? Yes. They all know about leaving the shack for us to handle? Yes. <sighs> waiting is the toughest part of a raid. <laughs> sure is. Always got that funny feeling in the pit of my stomach. Yeah, I know. I guess it's like... Hold it. There's the signal. You all ready? Yes. I'll wave them in. Okay, come on. Sure that's the right shack? From what Taylor told me, yeah. That's your gun ready? Uh-huh. Let's take it from the side. Right. I'll go in. Keep me covered. Okay. Captain? Yes? Come on in. Nobody here. Fire's still smoldering. I know. Well, maybe some of the other boys will pick him up. What have you got there? A hat. I don't like this. See the stain on the hat band? Yes. This is the hat the tailor was wearing when he came to see me at the coal yard. Are you sure? I'm positive. Then we know this is the right place. Yeah, but we don't know about Taylor. All I can figure is he left here in a big hurry. Or in big trouble. We will return in just a minute to tonight's exciting case from the official files of your FBI. Now a special message about the famous fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers prepared by the Equitable Life Assurance Society. About two months ago, the Equitable Society brought out a new edition of this chart, completely revised to fit the recent changes in the Social Security Act. These changes affect 45 million Americans, either by increasing their benefits 50 to 100 percent or by giving them Social Security coverage for the first time. In either case, the fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers is just what the average family needs to take stock of its changed situation in regard to future security. So great was this year's demand for this chart that many Equitable Society representatives report that their supply is almost exhausted. If you wish to secure a copy of this helpful chart, we suggest that you get in touch with your Equitable Society representative without delay. When you get the chart, you imagine for a minute that death has deprived your family of its breadwinner. His wages have stopped but the wife and children still have to live, and living costs plenty these days. 
how much money will they need for food, clothes, and all the other items required to keep a family running. The fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers will give you a reliable and accurate answer. With their new Social Security benefits, how many additional dollars will they need every week until the youngest child finishes high school? In five minutes, the fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers gives you an answer you can trust guides you every step of the way with simple, easy-to-understand pictures. Once you have the facts before you, you can plan intelligently. Chances are that with your present life insurance and your new Social Security benefits, only a small amount of additional life insurance will mean complete security. Your equitable representative will be glad to work out a sound and economical program for you. In any event, the first step is to ask him for a copy of the revised fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. No charge, of course, and no obligation. So get in touch with your equitable representative soon. Or write care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Jungle Killer. There is no such thing as a natural criminal, but men and women are daily bred to join the ranks of crime in various places. Cheap bars, unkempt pool halls, and dark alleys are among such breeding places. Perhaps the worst, though, is the one we have presented in tonight's case, the hobo jungle. Here you find not only indigent, homeless men, but also lawbreakers of every kind. There are such jungles in cities throughout the nation today. And some exist because far too many of you decent citizens protest when the police raid them. Protest what you call this treatment of picturesque characters who add color to the local picture. The result has been a timidity on the part of many local law enforcement agencies. For the police are public servants, and you are the public. You can do your part to rid your community of these jungles. Let your police know you want them removed, and they'll do the job. Tonight's file continues at the local FBI field office an hour later. Mr. Meade, it didn't work. The raid? Yes. Well, what happened? We moved in at 7.30 as scheduled, went to the shack where Taylor said they'd be, and no one was there. And he told you that Harper was coming to the shack for dinner? Yes. At least he thought it was Harper. Any indication where they'd gone? No, but I did find Taylor's hat. Oh. Had they eaten dinner? Well, the fire was smoldering, but no evidence of food. We rounded up every man in the jungle and took him to police headquarters. Did you question them about Taylor? Yes. We showed them his picture, Pop Russell's picture, too. But uh, naturally, they said they'd never seen him before. You think we ought to send another man to the jungle? No, if Taylor left voluntarily, he probably went to meet Harper. If he didn't, he's in a jam. In either case, there isn't time to start over again. What do you suggest we do? Well, let's assume that he's gone to meet Harper. Try to figure out where they'd be. There's a map on Taylor's desk. There's a pin in it for every place Harper's been arrested. Oh, I've seen it. Well, get hold of Pop Russell's record. Put a pin every place he's been picked up. Let me know if any of them match. Well, Jimmy boy, this mulligan's almost done. That's good. <laughs> you know... Every time I cook on a train, it reminds me of an old buddy of mine, Coal Car Johnny. <laughs> yeah, whenever he'd cook up a train dinner, it'd always burn through the floor and wound up on the tracks. <laughs> I'll bet he put a hole in half the boxcars west of the Mississippi. Hey, yeah, we're slowing down. Ah, uh, it's only a crossing. Hey, I see, you hear the bell? Yeah, but why would we stop for a crossing? Son, I learned a long time ago not to take on the responsibility of running the train. Now, let's take a little peek. All right. Uh, 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 easy, that far enough. Yeah, there you are. It's crossing all right. There's a guy standing over there. Yeah, I guess he's waiting to cross the track. Let's open this door wider and get some air, Pop. Come on. All right. Uh oh, my pot's boiling over. Oh, it does it every minute, every time you stop watching. Hey. Hey, mister. You calling me? Yeah. Come here, will you, please? Where are we? Huh? What town is this? 
Oh, it's Loganville. Go to a phone and call the police, will you? Why? Tell them to call the FBI and say that Taylor's all right and that I'm going to a jungle at the... Hey, try a cup of this stew, Jim. Oh, sure, Pop. Hey, you didn't tell me what Get you out want... of here. How about hey, this what's guy, the... Pop, wanting to climb in and ride with us? Ah, tell him to go find his own car. Yeah, but you I... Heard you heard what he said? I'll blow. <laughs> Come in, Mr. Mead. Yeah, Taylor's all right. Good. We don't know where he is. Oh, we've got some message from the Loganville police. They got a call from a man who said he saw Taylor. Where? At Loganville. This man was waiting for freight to clear the crossing when Taylor called to him from one of the cars and asked him to have the police phone us. Any message? No, just that he's all right and on his way to a jungle. Didn't say what jungle, who was with him, or anything else. Did Taylor get off the train at Loganville? Uh, you know as much as I do. Here's the whole teletype. Five lines. Yeah. Well, if he's on his way to see Harper, he couldn't have gotten off there. Why not? There's no jungle at Loganville. You better get up there, Perry. If Taylor does find Harper, he'll need help. Don't seem like much of a jungle, Pop. Well, it's not big, but it is exclusive. They keep out the riffraff. No. Hey, Bo. Yeah? Where'll I find Hatch Harper? The corner shack. Is that a weekend to see? Mm-hmm. Why didn't you say so? Uh, you know Hatch? I've heard of him. Yeah, I guess everybody has. He's really made a name for himself. I guess this is the place. Hello, Hatch. What? Hi, Pop. Hey, Hatch, I'd like to have you meet a friend of mine. His name is Jim. Hi. Hello. Well, look at you. Ho, ho. When did you start growing the tash? Uh, a couple of weeks ago. Well, it's swell. Gives you class. Mm -hmm. Hey, what brings you over this way, Pop? Well, we came over direct to see you. Got a proposition for you. Or rather, I should say, uh, Jim here's got a proposition. What kind? Safe job. Lay it up. Well, there's 50 grand in the box. Who does what? Pop cranks it. You're the muscle. I drive. Where is it? Lake City. No good. Huh? Why not, Hatch? I don't like big towns. Well, you must like big scores. I don't need it. Well, we, 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 we'll talk about it later. I ain't interested. Oh, now, look, Hatch. Let it lay. Let it lay for now, Jim. Oh, okay. Say, Hatch. Hatch, I wonder if you'd do an old pal a favor. Well, I've just been telling Jimmy Boy here what a great cook you are. And seeing as how our dinner was just a half a cup of stew... Uh... I'll fix you up. Oh, now, Pop, this is kind of moving in, isn't it? Oh, I like the cook. Pop, go outside. Yeah, yeah. Then first look up a guy named Louie. Louie. Tell him I need some flour. Yeah, get the flour from Louie. Then see a guy named Jake. Yeah, Jake. Tell him I need meat. Get the meat from Jake. Uh, he'll tell you where to find Patty. Patty, yeah. Get him for bread and coffee. Get the bread and the coffee from Patty. Uh -huh. And I suppose uh, you furnished the napkins, huh, Hatch? <laughs> Get moving. Yeah, oh, okay, okay. Mead speaking. George Perry, Mr. Mead. Oh, yeah, you in Loganville? Yeah. Any word from Taylor? No. Ah, uh, then I'm afraid we're stymied. You seen that man Taylor talked to? Yes, but he didn't have much. Was Jim alone? No. Somebody came to the door of the freight car while he and the man were talking. Pop Russell. From the description, yes. Exactly what did Taylor say? He asked where he was, and then he told the man to call the police and have them notify us. He then started to say he was going to a jungle when he was interrupted. Did he stay on the train? Yes. I see. Any railroad police up there? Oh, I've already talked to them. Perry... What time did that train get to Loganville? 9.14. 9.14. I want to check something. Call me back. Find those guys, Pop? Oh, yeah, yeah. I found them all right. <laughs> but I didn't get any food from them. Why not? Oh, I think we got a little business to attend to first. What do you mean? Uh, I think maybe I made a mistake bringing this guy here, Hatch. Oh, me? Yeah. 
Well, what's wrong with them? Well, after we left that other jungle, the place was raided. Who told you? Bo I was just talking to. He was there. The cops asked everybody questions about Jim and me. Well, how'd they find out about us? I got that all figured out. You what? You're a cop. Stop, will you? Well, you just prove you ain't. Well, you remember that railroad bow I slugged? Yeah. Don't that mean anything? It don't. Prove you ain't a cop. Oh, now, look, there's I no... got a gun here. Risk him, Pop. I'm not carrying. We'll find out. Nothing on him. Yeah, I didn't think there would be. Oh, now, look, if you guys were just... Shut up. What do you want to do with him, Hatch? Give him a trial. Yeah, yeah, kangaroo court? Yeah, that's right. I don't want any part of the kangaroo court. You ain't got nothing to say about it. Say, Hatch, uh, shall I shall I get a jury together? Yeah. Oh, fine, fine. What'll, what'll I tell him we're trying him for? Being a fink. Yeah, and if he's guilty? I'll take care of the sentence. That's the stuff. That's what I wanted to hear. I'm getting out of here. This gun says you wait. Hatch, why bother with the trial? You got a gun there. Why don't you just sentence him now? All right, you drop that gun. Oh, you. I was right. You are a cop. That's right, Pop. All right, come on, George. Let's take him to headquarters. Al Hatch Harper was turned over to state authorities and prosecuted for murder. He received a sentence of life imprisonment. Upon checking Pop Russell's fingerprints after his arrest, it was learned he was wanted in a western state for robbery. He was extradited, tried, and received a two-year sentence. By learning the approximate time the freight train carrying Special Agent Taylor had gone through Loganville, Agent in Charge Meade was able to check and discover that its run ended at a nearby city, a city where there was a known hobo jungle. You have already witnessed the results of that last bit of investigation. In tonight's case, you also witnessed Special Agent Taylor place his life in jeopardy, a situation which to law enforcement officers is part of a day's work, a situation which last year was repeated so often that 55 officers were killed in line of duty, killed while protecting you, the American people. In just a moment, you will hear about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. But first, another quick message from our Equitable Society representative on the fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. This Equitable chart has always been popular because of the good job it does. And now that it's revised for the new Social Security law, it's more popular than ever. The supply is going fast, so make sure you get yours. Get in touch with your nearest Equitable Society representative right away. Ask for your free copy of the fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. Or send a postcard care of this radio station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. File number 298. Its subject, The Christmas Season. Its title, The Return of St. Nick. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious. And any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson. And Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacy Harris. Others in the cast were Walter Catlett, Ed Gargan, Lamont Johnson, Edmund McDonald, Gaylord Pendleton, John Sheehan, and Roland Winters. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The return of St. Nick on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned for the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. There's fun for the whole family when Ozzie and Harriet come your way next. 
This program came to you from Hollywood.